Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Time you started humming lullabies instead. La, 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 la. Mama, what are some of the things one needs for a baby? Well, a home. That I have. Now, what are some of the other things? You've got three months left to shop. Exactly, only three months. Mama, do you realize I've been going to have this baby twice as long as I'm going to have left to be going to have it? <laughs> do you know what you mean? Yes, don't you? And in a few weeks, we'll be moving up to the farm, and there are no department stores around there. It won't be as easy to come to New York as being in New York. Well, you've got so sensible. Is it because you're going to be a mother? Could be. Or is it because David has warned you that you've got to stop running around so much? We're not running. We're walking. And David had nothing to do with it. He doesn't even know I'm out shopping with you. Oh? And whose idea was it? Dr. Rowland's nurse. Now, Mama, you know everything. Please, what are some of the things one needs for a baby? I heard you the first and second times. Well, you need a crib. I've got that already written down. And you need sheets and blankets and pillowcases and quilts Everything and... for the crib, I've got that written down, too. Oh, I wish some store would hurry up and have a sale. Honestly, they must think nobody's having a baby these days. They know you're having a baby, you and a few other women. That's why they're not having a sale. Well, that's very inconsiderate of them. They aren't any inducement at all. Then you need bottles and... I've oh. already bought those things. You sterilized bottles and it looks like a big Dutch oven. I boiled your milk bottles. You did fine on them. You know, it's amazing, but from all the instructions one gets from one's doctor, you think babies are born a lot more delicate than they used to be. Don't you believe it? I don't. But it's a wonder I don't. You weren't such a bad baby. You didn't cry very much except at night. You liked your food except when you didn't eat it. On the whole, you were quite pleasant and quite stubborn, and I'd say you haven't changed very much. Oh, Mama, it's practically impossible to believe that a baby ever grows up to be somebody like us, isn't it? Yes, it's almost a miracle. I think it is a miracle. It's all so complicated. I... I mean, all the things that have to happen from the time you want a baby to the time it's a grown-up person. And yet it all seems to happen almost by itself. You know that already? I've always known it. Sometimes I don't think you're my child after all. You don't? Some things you know and you have no right to know. Some things you should know. Yes. Well, do you know you'll have to buy the baby a bathinet? A bathinet? What's that? And the thingamajig you wash the baby in. Oh, I thought a bassinet was a bassinet with a lisp. Very funny. And then I have to get diapers and safety pins and baby oil and those little undershirts. And booties. Booties? Certainly. Didn't you know that babies wear their shoes to bed? Not mine. We'll see. Knit them in blue wool, Mama. You have a nerve. You think I'm going to sit around for the next three months knitting your offspring clothes you can buy in a store with much less trouble and much nicer? You're not fooling me. I'm not, eh? What else are you knitting, Mama? Oh, just a few things. But you tend to your shopping and I'll tend to my knitting. Where are you shopping, anyway? Right down here on 34th Street. And your list is all made out? Well, I think so. Except for the things you were going to suggest that you hadn't suggested. No, I think you've got enough to get started with. Of course, I, I want to get him a few toys. Such as an electric train. Would David like an electric train? David's just a small boy at heart. Oh, men are. That's why I love them. Them? David is all man, Mama. Don't ever forget it, dear. Well, if it's not an electric train, your baby will be born old enough for a rattle and a teething ring. Teething ring? I thought they didn't get teeth for ages. The way you talk, your baby will be born with a full set of uppers and lowers. Really? Then I think I'll get him a little plastic duck. For his teeth or for you to play with in the bathroom? Now, Mama. Well, here we are, 34th Street. Five nice big department stores all in a row waiting for you to attack them. You're coming with me. I should say not. You should say not? Why? Because I'm going home. I've had enough exercise for today. But the shopping part is the most fun part of the exercise. For you, maybe. And, Claudia, just one word of advice. Yes? Your son may be born old enough for a plastic duck, but he'll not be born old enough for a pair of roller skates. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, 
Hey, hey, don't bluffo, bluffo. You sound glad I'm home, old boy. And nothing to get so excited about now. Take it easy. I come home every night. Come, uh, tell me, where is the lady of the house? Hmm? Oh, in the kitchen. Claudia! Oh, if it's not the father of my child. Hello, Mr. Norton. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Norton. Cold out? Just right. Warm in? Just right. Now. Hmm. What should I smell? I don't know. Smells good. Oh, it's the apple pie I baked. Hmm. What else is it I smell? Uh, could be the cheese with the pie. Cheese? Did you hear the story about the cat who ate the cheese and waited over the mouse's hole with bated breath? <laughs> oh, you fool. <laughs> the salesman who told me that down at the office today should have stayed home. <laughs> well, it, it's good to be home. I just want to sit David. down and forget all about it. David, you forgot something already. I did? Yep. What? What could it be? Me. Oh, yes, you. Hello, you. Hello, you. <laughs> oh, I love you when you come home. I think I love you when you come home more every day. Well, that makes it worth coming home. You couldn't manage it twice a day, could you? Mm, sorry, ma'am, no. no. Only once. Darling, you look tired. I do. I don't feel tired. You sure? Haven't got a headache or something? No, no headache. No nothing. Oh, you don't sound awfully happy either. Now, how does a man sound when he sounds happy? I don't know. Happy! <laughs> Well, maybe I don't feel very happy. You don't, David. What's the matter? Something wrong? No, no nothing's wrong. Nothing for you to worry about. But David, if you are worrying, I want to be worrying, it's a too. a big waste of time, darling. What is? Worrying in sympathy. Worrying in general, you mean. David, what happened? Tell me, please. Telling helps. I know it does. Darling, nothing happened. You sure? Cross my heart. Then what is it? Oh, I just get sore, I guess. At what? People. Anybody in special? Nobody in special. Well, then, for instance? Well, you meet so many people who aren't fit to be alive. Who? Oh, some guy on Long Island. Reggie wants to buy his plant, you know, to convert to his factory for blind men. Just because the man knows Reggie has money, he's asking the most exorbitant price just to be nasty, to make a big profit out of somebody else. Never for a moment thinking a lot of innocent people may suffer because of it. Well, do you have to buy his factory? This is the fourth one that the same thing's happened on. Sometimes I think the world is full of so many selfish, greedy people. I, I wonder about bringing a child into it. Oh, no, David. Maybe a lot of children born and brought up not to be selfish and greedy will change things. Maybe someday there'll be a lot of children who will outnumber them. Maybe. But maybe a lot of children born will grow up to be just like them. I'm not going to think that way. <laughs> You're right. Don't think that way, darling. If I did, I wouldn't want six children. And, David, I insist. I know, I know. All six. Now, come on. What would you do today? Me? Mm -hmm. Oh, I spent some of your hard-earned money. Oh, again? Not again, still. <laughs> what did you spend it on this time? Yes. Mm, something new for the house. Nope. Uh, present for me. Selfish and greedy? No. Uh, present for yourself. Me? After mm. everything I've been saying? No. No? For Mama? Honestly, David, you're the worst guesser. Well, you, you haven't given me a hint. We've been talking about it almost ever since you came home. We have? Let's see, uh... People. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Uh, babies, for, for the baby. Go to the head of the class. <laughs> now, guess what I bought. I will not guess one more thing. Darling, this is not a quiz program. I'm not going to win $64, a refrigerator, <laughs> six Cadillacs, and a washing machine, so just tell me, tell me, what is it you bought for the baby? Well, all right. Only I, Only I... Only what? I hope you're not going to think I'm silly. Whatever you bought, darling, I promise I will not think you're silly. It's not a present for him the minute he is born. I didn't think it would be. I mean, it's going to take him a little while before he, he enjoys it. Claudia, you didn't? I didn't what? It isn't an electric train. Mama said you love an electric train. With an engine and a caboose and freight cars and a station and red and green lights and everything? No. Well, all right, with, without red and green lights, does it really run? No. Darling, you didn't buy an electric train that doesn't run, do you? David, you're going to be terribly disappointed. Oh. 
It's not an electric train. But if you like, I'll, I'll get you one. Well, it's just as well you didn't buy it. That's that's something a man's got to buy for himself. For his uh, son, I mean. Yes, yes, I know. I know what you mean. It's something very small, David. As a matter of fact, it's right here in this this, this little box. Oh, here. It is very, very small. Looks to me as if it would be about the right size for a newborn child. Looks as, to me as though he ought to outgrow it before he's a week old. You you better look at it. Here, you you open it. Oh, feels very light. All this paper. Darling, it must be the size of a ladybug. <laughs> I can't imagine what it is. Oh, David, I hope you'll like it. It cost an awful lot of money. Maybe I shouldn't have... I'll return it tomorrow if you think I should. But I just fell in love with it, darling, and I I couldn't think of anything better than... My darling, it's beautiful. You really like it? Like it? It is beautiful. It's the purest jade, and it's, it's so delicately carved. Oh, now I can breathe again. It is exquisite. Carved jade statue of a Chinese god. Seems so perfect to me, David. It is perfect. It holds all the beauty and hope in this world. That's what I thought. And I thought that if we gave it to our son, kept it near him, someday he'll be sure to know what's most important. Our son will grow to love this jade figure, darling. And that learning will, that'll be everything. And you don't think I was silly? Silly? I'm glad... That you think a child of ours would love this more than an electric train. Oh, he'll love electric trains, too. And, David, I want him to have both. <laughs> he'll have both, darling, because he has you. And because I have you. Some homes seem to invite the world and his wife to come in, sit down, and relax. Entertaining comes easy in such homes... The hostess never seems tired and out of sorts. She sees to it that Coca-Cola goes on the shopping list the minute the supply gets low because she knows that ice-cold Coke is the simplest way to make folks welcome. Have you plenty of Coke on ice? If not, better order a case today. Oh, oh, Mr. King. So Claudia bought a small jade figure. Oh, were you surprised, Mrs. Brown? Well, she was going out to buy a layette. But no, I, I don't suppose I was surprised. I'm getting used to Claudia doing the unexpected. Oh, but even so, the uh, uh, unexpected is quite unexpected, isn't it? It is. For instance, I never really expected Claudia to get so excited about the farm. But now she's really thrilled about living up in Eastbrook, I think. And how do you feel about it, Mrs. Brown? Me? I think it's wonderful. I'm only hoping it all works out for them. And tomorrow, Claudia and David are going up to Eastbrook to find a farmer for the place... Do you think it'll be very difficult? Mm, That's hard to say. Uh, One doesn't come by a good farmer every day, Mrs. Brown. No, one doesn't. Well, we'll find out tomorrow, I suppose. I, for one, can hardly wait. Good night, Joe. Good night, Mrs. Brown. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause, the pause that refreshes. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.